Now, there are lots of Europeans in South America, and so you could probably find folks who think, you know, as we do. There's a whole community in Ecuador of foreigners built up there. I believe it's uh, Mr. George Green. Look up George Green in Ecuador. He's a very wealthy man who's been trying very hard to explain all this to people for years. And he's worth millions, and he hasn't gotten very far, and I don't have any money, so I don't expect to get anywhere at all, but we're giving it a try. The Argentinian government, for example, is very corrupt, so not really maybe a good place to be. Um, and the city of Buenos Aires, I'm told, is very dangerous, whereas the city of Mendoza is very friendly and very safe. This is according to my Argentinian friends, and it's also agricultural-based. But again, lots of open land, and not nearly high enough up. Now, Brazil, I think, has the sixth largest economy in the world. Again, really close to the South Pole. Again, not a lot in the way of major mountains. But you've also got Chile. Chile is right there, very southern, but it's got the Andes. So you've got lots of mountains, very high, lots of caves. But it also is the center of the last couple of major earthquakes. The one in 2010 actually changed the physical shape of the Earth. So, again, you know, it's up to you. What can you afford? What do you want to do? What do you feel most comfortable being or going? Got an email from a gentleman who's in Switzerland, which is great. Uh, very high mountains, very secluded, very, very safe. The problem is the government. The Swiss are very pro-Swiss and anti foreigner. So unless you've married a Swiss person, uh, when things get bad, they're going to throw you out of the country. Unless you've bought off a lot of people, which again gets back to having a lot of cash. So I cannot recommend Switzerland for foreigners. One gentleman asked me, well, how about having a boat? How about going to the Bahamas? Well, same problem. Water levels are rising. The Bahamas would be buried underwater. And it's going to be buried underwater either from a violent change of the earth being flipped end for end. Just look at the water line at Baalbek, up 3,840 feet up in the hills of Lebanon, where the flood sat for a couple of years the last time. So the Bahamas will be buried underwater either because the Earth flips end for end or because the South Pole is hit by a meteor and melts all that ice again. Ice into the ocean. And again, sorry, broad brushing. Don't have a lot of time. See, at the village, we'll be using things that I know about, such as vacuum-powered electrical generators, vacuum tube technology, which are immune to the electromagnetic pulse, which is going to happen when the Earth flips and all that planetary lightning happens, all of your electronics will be fried. Now, the Russians know this, and the Russians have gone back to using vacuum tubes in all of their technology, and they're real good at it. We're going to be using hemp-fueled uh, diesel engines. Hemp is a wonderful product. Hemp has been around forever, and hemp is the most useful plant you can imagine. From hemp, which you get a crop every 90 days, and it actually restores the soil as opposed to cotton, which actually decimates the soil. Hemp, you can get fiber, makes wonderful cloth. Hemp, you can get oil, which you can either drink as food or use and burn as diesel fuel. It gives you seeds that are edible. It gives you sugar, which you can make plastic out of. It's really an extraordinary plant, and it was outlawed in the United States because uh, a very rich man by the name of William Randolph Hearst, back in the early 30s, 1930s, wanted, obviously, to make money. So he bought large tracts of old-growth forest, which he wanted to make money on. But at the time, we were growing hemp in the United States, and we were using it for all these things. We made paper from hemp. We made uh, cloth from hemp. We made rope from hemp. We made fuel from hemp. It was feed for us and our animals. So William Randolph Hearst bought a U.S. senator and outlawed hemp in the United States. So all of a sudden, you couldn't grow the most useful plant known to man. You had to buy, if you wanted paper, you had to buy these old growth forests from William Randolph Hearst, and he made, of course, millions. Hemp is a wonderful plant. Get it. I'm not talking about marijuana. I'm talking about hemp. Anyway, we'll be growing lots of hemp. We'll also be using motionless pumps and custom-designed computers. I designed these on my own that will survive the EMP. So we've got all of this. 
But again, sadly, this is me planning for 40 years. And I simply cannot speak to your individual needs. I'm planning for a community of at least 100 people, all hired for their unique skills. And, I'm, and, and pardon my spiritual leanings, a community of good people. And we're going to hire these workers, these artisans, these farmers, these craftsmen. And they don't have any knowledge of the event. They don't need to. We're going to hire them to save their lives and to give them a chance, all of us a chance in the future, and in a real life. And all of us will live it together. And honestly, I do hope to meet you on the flip side. I hope to shake your hand. And I hope to hear all about all of your adventures. And hey, I'll buy the beer. See, you're beginning to see, I hope now, that this is not something you can just throw together at the last minute. I, again, I've been doing this for 40 years. So I know what needs to be done. I know what can be done. So if you're smart, see if you can raise some investment capital for a uh, for-profit business. The village will be run as a for-profit business up until the very end. And then we close our doors and hide. So if you get any ideas for raising capital for an above organic a farm, a ski resort, a training facility, work on it. You can let me know. I'll give you anything you need. But first I need to know who you are. Because I've been approached several times by people claiming that they can raise capital. And I say, great, here's my resume, let me see yours. Never heard from them again. I wish I could I wish I could be more help. For all of us here at the 2012fad.com, this has been Charlie Bluehawk. Wishing you a really good day. And please remember, please try to keep at least that one good thought. The 2012 Fad is brought to you by Coffee and Blood, Love Letters Between the Dead, a series of five erotica horror novels about a fallen angel finding his way back to regain his own soul, and how the CIA war against the human race their black magic captures and traps him in the body of a mind-controlled slave designed to hunt down and to kill their god, their Satan.